Guys, welcome back. It is Racer X, and today I'm actually back in my old friend, the Hellcat. As many of you may be aware, I sold this car uh, maybe about three weeks back, and uh, just prior to the event uh, where I raced Donk Master. If you saw the footage where I raced Donk Master, this car actually managed to beat his black blur car. I believe this is the first Hellcat to ever beat Donk Master's black blur car, and I was very, very excited. It was a fantastic event, but there was actually something going on with the Hellcat during the course of that event and uh, it really was probably not going to happen at one point. We were very skeptical whether we should race, uh, but we raced. The event, uh, it went fantastic, but uh, today I'm actually on the way to GearHeads because something needs to get remedied and I want to tell you all about what was going on that day. Also guys, if you are new to my channel, do me a big gigantic favor, hit subscribe for me. I've got so much good content coming up for you this year. It's going to be an absolute blast. You can also hit the notification bell and you'll get notified when I have new videos out. Follow me on Instagram and here we go. <laughs> we got the thousand horsepower helmet. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> So for those of you guys that actually saw the footage, uh, I, I sold this car like two days prior to the big YouTube showdown between Dogmaster and Demonology where I was also supposed to race Dogmaster and his black blur car. That event did not happen in Memphis, that race. And I was super bummed that it didn't. I thought, you know, man, I had him. But uh, of course, when we went back, this time, Dogmaster had turned up his car from like 15 pounds of boost to over 30 pounds of boost. And that thing is making massive, massive power. I'm guessing somewhere in the 14 or 1500 horsepower range. So I went from probably being the favorite to definitely being the underdog in that race. And the car performed. And for those of you that saw the footage of it, nobody ever knew that there were things happening in the background, but there were. And for some odd reason, whenever you go to sell a performance car, the car always seems to have the last word and, and it started throwing weird codes literally at the track or, or just prior to going to the track that the car had never thrown before like map sensor codes and just weird stuff like that AC uh, coolant pump codes I never ha has the car thrown codes like that and I, I just could not figure out what the heck was going on the owner was nice enough to, to trailer the car out there so I could still race Donk Master so and you saw the result it went down and we were successful in beating him it was a very very exciting thing but the race was was very very uh, much in doubt because when I sent off the data log from the very first pass it, uh, the data log came back and the fuel pressure was reading really low. So I sent it off to my good buddy B. Mason, uh, my tuner Alex Pites. They looked at the data log and they said, man, I would not run that car again. Uh, your fuel pumps are looking a little suspect and you simply don't have enough fuel pressure which could cause your car to go lean and possibly car or cause the car to um, blow up. So <laughs> not an ideal situation. So long story short, we decided to just give it a go anyway. Just go ahead and let her rip Tater Chip. And the car did what this car always does. It just nailed it. It just zipped down through like it always does. This car has been the epitome of consistency and fast. And it did what I expected it to do. And we won. So So, super. 
super, super cool that that was able to happen. And uh, now I've got to still make sure that uh, things go right on this car. Obviously for the new owner, I felt like it was the right thing to do. So we're gonna go address that issue with our buddies down here at Gearheads. They will get me all squared away. But uh, no one would ever be able to tell by looking at the footage of the race that there was uh, something going on with the car. And real quick, I'm just gonna address it because I know how you guys are and you're gonna ask me questions about it. Why? Are there pool noodles <laughs> sticking out of your back seat? Well, guys, that is actually a one of four boxes in the car right now going to Gearheads because Gearheads is also who's going to be doing my twin turbo build on the Mustang. What better opportunity to haul all that stuff with the big family hauler <laughs> when I've got the Hellcat? So uh, anyway, I did get the owner's permission to haul the twin turbo kit down there. So staging the twin turbo kit for that build coming up here in the next couple of weeks. It's going to be exciting. All right, guys, I have made it to Gearhead's performance in Mansfield. As you can see, the Hellcat is now back here behind me. And my man, Luis, he knows my car very well. He works on both my car and my good buddy, Demonology's car, uh, even back when he was a service guy at uh, Metter Dodge. So anyway, he is here at Gearhead's and he is doing his magic. So basically what's happening right now is I got, uh, I got brand new fuel pumps going in the car. I had them uh, shipped over from uh, Four Innovations. And uh, let's hope that that will fix the issue with the fuel pressure in the car and the car will be happy again so he's doing his work you can see him right there he's uh got the back of the car open and uh, i know he'll have us up and running in no time well as you can see luis has the magic box there from four innovations so uh let's hope that they got all the right stuff <laughs> in there for us the yeah let's see what what we got here right. so the ideal situation would be is if it would just bolt right in right absolutely <laughs> do you think that's going to happen um there will be bolts. There, there will, will be, be bolts, bolts. And there will be some play. Yeah. If they work together, that's, that's a different story. That's it. We can see Matt back there, too. Matt's who installed the X-Mod on my... Uh, he's done a bunch of stuff on this car as well, but he installed the X-Mod on the Mustang recently. So uh, let's hope Luis actually gets a break today and everything bolts in really nice and easy and that quick. <laughs> Fingers crossed. All right, guys, hey, check hey, this out. Talk about it. Be about it, man. There's our man Hunter as well. Check out uh, Travis, the owner, has bought this brand new toolbox. Uh, you want to talk about going all in. Look at this thing. <laughs> Hunter, tell me. <laughs> what's going on with this toolbox, man? You could put people in this toolbox. <laughs> it's like a, like a $30,000 toolbox you have here. Who's the mastermind behind this thing? <laughs> So as you can see, Luis is now in the process of trying to get the, those fuel pumps lifted out. So the gas tank actually sits below these uh, the back seat back here. So he's uh, just kind of, there's a couple little specialty tools that he's got to use to get that out. But I have a feeling he's going to have this knocked out in uh, in no time. So really this whole exercise is, uh, is sort of brings up an interesting point because when you're running a car that makes this kind of power, as we know, this car makes a thousand horsepower. I've had the Bravo kit on this, uh, the Bravo package, as I would say. I've had it on the car for, what, three years now. So this car has a lot of passes on it. It's been running, uh, it's been running some big power, and, and it has been do really doing it flawlessly for a long time. But this just illustrates the importance of data logging, why it's so important to data log essentially every pass that you do. And not only data log, but also study the data logs, because they will tell you a lot. It's kind of your car's report card if you will it tells you if your car is healthy it can check all sorts of things hundreds of metrics to look at to make sure everything is working the way it's supposed to and catch something like this early before you do in fact blow your car up <laughs> so and then it's a lot less expensive to fix so very important step data logging when you're talking about cars that make this sort of power all right, so he has got uh, both the filters up in the air. These are twin 450s, and we're actually uh, looking at the fuel uh, the, the fuel filters right now. Luis, what do you see right. on these? So these are the, the pickup filters. These are the intake. Now, they're, they're part of the, the tanks itself. Okay. But what we're looking for, is since you're having a drop in pressure and whatnot, um, I'm looking for just excessive dirt and, and clumps and stuff like this. So yep. I don't know if you can see, pick up in camera, this spot right here. Let's look. That there is a dark. Oh, spot I do of, see that. Of, yeah, uh, black stuff right there. Okay, I got so you. So a lot of stuff like that gets trapped in between here, and so I, I you know, unless you make your own E85, <laughs> there's a risk. <laughs> I haven't of, done that in a little while. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a risk of uh, you know uh, some contamination and yeah, some, some clogging having a clogged fuel filter. That obviously would make a huge difference in how these right. things flow because that thing, they, these are flowing a lot of fuel at, at one time, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's. They, a, so you get some sort of a, a blockage in there. It can make a huge difference. So here's your uh, comparison to oh yeah, however long your so here's here's a brand new filter, and then here we have the used ones that have been in the car about what 
three years now. Yeah, so absolutely. Wow, interesting. All right, you can see he's putting the final touches on those brand new pumps and filters. So uh, looks like you got it all buttoned up. Yes, sir. Heck yeah, man. So now we just got to drop tank. her back in and connect them up. And hopefully that uh, will be off to the races, man. Absolutely. Nice work. All right, pumps are safely in. So now we just got to put the uh, back seat back in place and uh, we should be good to go. All right, well, thanks to my good buddy, Luis. He has got those brand new four uh, fuel pumps in the car. So I have a feeling the car will be very happy. We'll uh, do some data logging here in the next couple of days if it ever quits raining to make sure that the car is actually 100% healthy and the thing is actually making about 80 PSI through those lines the way that it should. So once again, it's uh, it's really important to go ahead and data log all your passes. You can do them on the street even just to make sure the car is healthy. But uh, I have a feeling that the new owner will be really happy with these new pumps. Big shout out to my buddies gear at uh, Gearheads and I'm gonna catch you on the next one. So until then, Racer X.